Hey, I just want to let you know that this video is part of a larger course called Operating Systems 101 on CyberTrainingPro.com. So if you enjoy the content, you want to see the rest of the course, or you want to see other courses that we have or our career services, make sure to check out CyberTrainingPro.com. I'll leave a link in the description so you can check it out. All right, let's get started. In this video, we're gonna talk about the Windows file system. If you've ever installed the Windows operating system or even just use a computer with Windows on it, then you've most likely noticed that the main drive is the C drive. This is called the root directory and it's the default on most Windows systems. Any drive or partition on a Windows system, just like the root directory, is gonna have a letter followed by a colon assigned to it. Many years ago, when we had floppy drives, this was usually the A drive, and today we usually see new drives like CD drives or network drives starting at the letter D of the English alphabet. Any of the letters of the alphabet can be used as drives. On the screen, I've listed several common storage locations in the Windows operating system. Applications are stored in the program files directory, and if you have a 64-bit system with 32-bit applications, you'll also have the x86 folder. User data is stored in either the Users Directory for Windows Vista or newer, or in Documents and Settings for Windows XP and older. Finally, application configurations are stored in the Program Data Directory in Windows Vista or later, and this directory is hidden. From a security perspective, there's also key files throughout the operating system like the SAM database for passwords and ntuser.dat for the registry database, but don't worry too much about that right this second. Here are several common user folders on the Windows operating system. As you can see in the top left of the table, the username with the percent signs is replaced with each username on the system. This means that every user has these folders. Here are some more common user folders on the Windows operating system. Alternate data streams or ADS is something that you absolutely have to know about. ADS was introduced in Windows to support the Apple Hierarchical File System or Apple HFS. Apple HFS stores information about a file, like the name of the program that created it in a file resource fork. That means that although Windows doesn't use it, it allows compatibility between the different operating systems. Internet Explorer adds its own identifier stream to files that are downloaded from the internet as part of ADS. We also sometimes see attackers using alternate data streams to hide malicious files from normal view, which doesn't affect the file or really anything about it. That means if you didn't know that ADS was being used, you couldn't really tell just by looking at the normal file. For this exercise, we're gonna go ahead and go to Google and we're gonna find just a random image that we're going to use for an ADS exercise. Okay, the first thing that I want you to do for this exercise is go find any image, it doesn't really matter what the image is, and you're gonna name it logo.png like I've done and just save it to your desktop. So I just got this random picture of a hacker here that we're gonna use. The next thing that I want you to do is go to the start menu and we're gonna open up a command prompt window. So we'll go ahead and open this up. And I want you to change directories to where the image is at. So for us, it's on the desktop. So we're gonna to change to the desktop. And we can see logo.png right there, that's our image. Now we're gonna type echo, I need to hide this, and we're gonna put this in hideme.txt. Now we'll make sure the file exists, so we'll type type hideme.txt, and we have the text, I need to hide this. All right, now let's use the dirt command here, and let's look at the file sizes here. So of hideme.txt, we have 24 here, and then the logo is this larger number here. Now we're gonna create the alternate data stream. So go ahead and type this command here. Now let's go ahead and do another dir command. Okay, so you can see that nothing really changed here. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna delete this hideme.txt file. Okay, now we're gonna open the image here. Okay, looks pretty normal to me, the exact same image that we had before. So let's go ahead and close that. Now we're gonna open up the logo image in Notepad. Right, so now we can see that text that we actually had in the ADS is now embedded in this file. We close that, we go back to our command prompt window and we type dir slash r. You can now see that that file, that data, is embedded inside of that image file. There is an ADS inside of the logo image. Mandatory integrity controls or MICs are something that Windows uses to prevent users and processes that have one level of trust from modifying files at another level of trust. A good example is if Internet Explorer was trying to modify operating system files, 
in the System32 directory. Operating system services operate with a system integrity level. Administrative users are assigned a high integrity level. Unprivileged users are assigned either a medium or a low integrity level, with medium being the default level that's assigned to users. Operating system objects like files are assigned either a high, medium, or low integrity level, and users must have at least the same level or higher integrity level as the file that they want to modify. A key point is that the operating system will reduce the integrity level of users for specific activities like browsing the web or reading emails. Windows uses something called discretionary access controls or DACLs to control access to files and system objects. Everything has a set of permissions for who can access that object or do various actions. These objects have an object owner that can always modify permissions on that object and control who can access it. On the screen are standard permission levels that exist in Windows. For example, you can give a user the read permission by itself, and that's all they can do with the file, or you can give multiple permissions. Windows also allows for granular control with the advanced permissions, but we aren't gonna dive into that here. Let's say that you apply specific permissions to a folder on your computer. That folder is the parent folder, and objects like files and folders inside of that parent folder become children, and they can inherit permissions from that parent. Alternatively, you can apply explicit permissions on a folder so that anything inside of that folder doesn't inherit those same permissions. A good example of this would be if you had a folder called customers that anybody in the company can access and has read permissions to. You might also have a child folder inside of that parent called private with social security numbers that you only want specific people to be able to access. You can apply explicit permissions to that folder. As permissions get more granular, you'll also see the ability to allow or deny specific actions. For example, you might want to allow read permissions but deny the ability to write or modify files. It's also important to understand that a deny rule is gonna take precedence over allow rules. That means that if you have a deny and an allow rule for the same thing, the permission's going to be denied. On the screen, I've laid out the precedence order of permissions in the Windows operating system. As you can see, if permissions are explicitly set, they take precedence over inherited permissions. Explicitly denied permissions are also the highest precedence permissions that you can have on the Windows operating system.